was kind of chaotic. There was no order, but uh, there was a person who existed called God. By the way, he existed in Trinity, God the Father, uh, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Spirit was hovering over the formless universe. So it's like him actually uh, embracing. He was a covering. He was uh, embracing like a mother hen would uh, embrace her chicken, chicks, little chicks, right? So the Holy Spirit was uh, hovering over the universe. By the way, uh, there was an order. As God spoke the light into existence, He spoke the animals into existence, and He spoke the sky and the ocean to, to existence. So by His word, the universe became in, uh, came in order and all things were created. So that's what he's saying. And, uh, and uh, he created uh, everything and it culminated by creating human beings. So his creation activity, the full process, starting from formlessness to there's light, there's sky, and the ocean, and all the creature. And finally, his best masterpiece called human being came. So he created male and female in his own image. What does that mean? Does it mean that God has nose and ears and eyes? Uh, probably not. Maybe or maybe not. The Bible does not say. But when he says, when uh, the Bible says that we are created, you and I, it does not matter where you came from. It does not matter what kind of religion that you have. Um, it doesn't matter what ethnic group, what uh, social status you have, what kind of job you have, what kind of background you have, it doesn't matter. God created each one of you very uniquely. And each one, each one of you are a masterpiece. A great work. Why? Because the Creator is a great master. He is... So, you know, when, when you go to... Like, how many of you are, like, artists? Sort of. Artists? Interest in arts? Yeah? Okay. So, um, have you seen like Leonardo da Vinci's like um, masterpiece, like the uh, the, the uh, buildings, you know, Catholic buildings that he built, all the paintings on the wall, like it's amazing, right? Michelangelo, like Koreans call it Michelangelo, right? Michelangelo, his sculptures are amazing. And uh, if there's an original, it'll be like priceless. You cannot really put a price on it because, because the, the people, the artist who created the artwork is so great. You cannot, you cannot really put a price tag on the masterpiece, right? So God as the master artist is much greater than Leonardo da Vinci. It's much greater than Michelangelo, anybody that you can imagine. And he created many of us because he loves us. Obviously, when you create a lot of the same thing, it should be good, right? And so you and I are his creation, the masterpiece. And when he created everything else, like the you know the, the stars in the sky, uh, the sky and the uh, seas in the ocean, uh, the or the uh, fish in the ocean, he said, "Oh, it's good. I made it, but objectively speaking, it's good because it came out of me." However, when he created human beings, Adam and Eve, the first male and female, uh, he said, very good. It's not just good, it's very good. That's my, like, my piece. Like, my, uh, it's representative of who I am. It's representative of my, my excellence. So the essence of my excellence is human beings that I created, is what he's saying. And so, um, when he says, we're created in his image, what does that mean? It means a lot of things. And I should step back, because <laughs> they always want me to here. All right, you guys are so far away. Maybe next time you can come closer. Maybe. But, so, uh, when God created us in his own image, what is his image? His image, first and foremost, is holy. God is holy. There's no bad in him. There's no evil. There's no malicious thoughts. There's no hint of darkness in him. It's all light. It's all good. Um, 
it's, it, holiness is very hard to describe because it's uh, such an abstract term. But there's only goodness in him, love and mercy and justice for him. And so when God created us in his own image, although we are living in a fallen world, when we watch the news, it's pretty discouraging sometimes because we see all kinds of crimes on the street, you know, in our own country and other countries as well. Um, shooting in high schools, you know, wars, famines. We see evil in this world. How did that happen? But well, originally, it was good. And there's no bad in him. So darkness, sickness, hate, crimes, they all come, come from a different source. But there's nothing like that in God. And when God created us, he created each one of us so that each one of us would reflect his goodness, his holiness, his gentleness, his humility, his righteousness, his justice, his love. Another key aspect of God is that he's relational. Let's say together, God is relational. I'm letting you practice your English for some of you. God is relational, let's say. All right, did you have breakfast? All right, even if you didn't, <laughs> you have louder voice than that. God is relational. Thank you. That was much better. Uh, he's relational. How is it? How is he relational? Okay, so I want to ask you this question. What is the most cruel form of punishment in prison? For those who have been in prison before. No, just kidding. <laughs> All right. All right. So what is the most um, cruel form of punishment? Um, that's like the worst punishment, right? The, the, the worst punishment. But what's the most cruel punishment? So, like if you, so people are in prison for a reason. Some people, you know, because of injustice, they're there. But no, I would say like majority of them did something against God, you know, against the law, and they broke broke the law, and then they're they're there, right? So, not that in itself is bad. But aside from that, if they do something worse <laughs> in prison, uh, then they would throw you into an isolated cell. Uh, it's dark. There's no light, right? and they're all alone. So it's called um, solitary confinement. That's the most cruel form of punishment. Because when you have no human contact, I mean, in prison cells, you probably don't have the regular human interactions. Uh, you're not surrounded by your neighbors. They're not friendly, you know. Uh, maybe you're surrounded by guards. Uh, maybe some inmates. But uh, you do have a little bit of minimal human contact. But if you're thrown into prison just alone, solitary confinement. Um, you have nobody to talk to throughout the entire day. Uh, you have no one um, that talks to you. Uh, no one even, you know, you can go insane just by, by being alone for, say, two, three days. So why? Why is it the most cruel form of punishment? Because you and I were created for a relationship. <clears throat> How many of you have friends? Not Facebook friends, but real friends. Not that Facebook friends are not real friends, but you know, like, I'm not talking about the cyberspace, I'm talking about like, do you have friends that you meet up face to face, eat meals together, talk, go somewhere together? Do you have friends? How many of you have friends? Only one person has friends? Come on. All right. <laughs> All right, thank you. At the back, your friends, right? Yeah. Be shy. I'm, I'm glad that you have friends because we're created for a relationship. And when I say relationship, I'm not talking about like romantic relationship. Well, that that's that's part of it. But I'm talking about general relationship that we have: friendship, uh, your relationship with your mentors, your sports coach, um, your family relationship. Um, your relationship at work, a, a little bit different than friendship, but it's still a relationship, right? Uh, if you ever go to church, there's a church community where you have relationships, right? Um, how many of you have friendship that lasted for more than 10 years? Yeah, 
Good. I'm glad. Tried and true. Missed it. And you can't, it's still standing. Yeah? You, you guys didn't break up. I'm, talk, I'm, not, I'm talking about like, you know, genuine friendship. Right? It takes work. It takes effort to cultivate friendship. Right? Um, it doesn't automatically come, and we should always appreciate who we are. Even if the other person is imperfect and sometimes, you know, very annoying sometimes, right? You know, that they sometimes, uh, our old friends have annoying habits. I have annoying habits. I hope my friends tolerate that. And that's, that's how I have old friends. Right? Um, when we have friends and when we have daily interactions, like, well, it doesn't have to be every day. We're, we're sometimes busy, right? We're working, going to school, or doing some, something. And so we cannot meet them every day. But every once in a while, we catch up. And there's like a heart-to-heart -heart conversation. I can talk about my vulnerable side, like a, you know, something that I don't talk about to other people, right? In this classroom, maybe you don't talk about everything. However, when you meet your friends, especially old friends, you talk about the most vulnerable side of yourself, your fears, desires, your dreams, your visions. If you have that friend, even one friend. That changes the quality of your life. Your life is more fulfilling and satisfying because of that person. That's it. Okay. I really hope and pray that you have those relationships. If you don't have those relationships, I'm praying and hoping that you will start that relationship. How do you start that relationship? You become the person that, that you're, you're thinking about. I wish I had this kind of friend I wish I had this kind of husband or wife. I wish I had this kind of teacher. Okay, you become that person. You know what? Then you start attracting attracting those people who hold the same values. And finally, you get to have the friend of your dream, the relationship of your dream. Um, I'm going off a little bit uh, tangent, but this this just came up. Like it, this just crossed my mind. Um, it's an important principle in your life that you can learn, that you can start practicing. And so anyway, so God created you and me for a relationship. Do you know that? Wow. Do you know that God is unfathomably great? He's so big. He cannot be contained by the universe. He created the universe. You, you know, like a, have you made something like a model of some, some, something like a, uh, if you're into like architecture, you, you know, when you were growing up, you don't have to be an architect. Um, you know, like there are like arts projects or something like that. You you have like you build a house, little house. Uh, you build little rooms. Have you done that before? Yeah, yeah. Um, can you go into the house and start living? <laughs> no way. You made those and they're fine. It's a fine piece, very good, and you're satisfied. But you cannot go in there and live because you're bigger than that. Our creator, God, is much bigger than his own creation. He cannot be contained by the universe. Do you know that universe is infinitely big? Well, it, it's not infinite. Wait a minute. It's not infinite, according to science, scientific research. But it's finite, but it's so big that we're discovering and discovering again and discovering more about the universe. All right? Do you know that the universe is expanding? It's not in a permanent state, it's expanding. Oh, guys, oh, this room is expanding, guys. Oh, you see that? <laughs> okay, um, I'm just joking. But the universe is expanding at this moment, from the very beginning until it comes to an end. Do you know that the universe is not permanently existing? It's not everlasting. <laughs> there was a beginning. Do you know that most scientists, if, you're a, if, if you have studied in depth, you know that there is an end to it. The universe is not infinite. So there's an end that comes, guys. Uh, it could be soon. Uh -huh. We never know. We, we're, not, we're not aware when it's going to be. But there are some signs of deterioration. Like the, the universe is aging. Oh, you see that it's, it's not as fresh as 5,000 years ago. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so uh, God created you and me because that's in the beginning. God created, God was, God existed. He is the 
ultimate cause of everything, not everything good. He exists in God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit existed. They had a perfect unity. They had a perfect relationship, a love relationship. I know that this sounds a little bit strange to some of you. Maybe you've never heard this before, but uh, we're going to kind of explain it a little more later. But let me just tell you that he existed in the relationship from the very beginning. And he saw that his relationship with it, within Trinity, within three persons, was so good. He wanted to duplicate that. He wanted that goodness to spread out. So he created Adam and Eve first. He did not create, wow, isn't it amazing? He created two human beings from the beginning because being alone was not good. If you read carefully uh, Genesis chapter 2, God says everything was good. Everything that he made was good. But there was one thing that he said is not good. Is the fact that he created Adam first, a guy first, and he said, you being alone is not good. And so he created Eve. Being alone is not good. So I'm going to create another human being like you, but different, of the same excellence. And put you together to reflect our good relationship so that you can create your relationship that is so reflective of mine. So he created male and female in his own image. To be, to be his representative on the earth. Did you see, did you read that he gave the, uh, all the creation, go, govern them, rule over them? When he says rule over them, there's a little bit of misunderstanding. Sometimes uh, some people, especially I guess in the Western mind, um, we tend to think ruling over is like taking advantage of it. You know, like it's mine. So I will do whatever in order to utilize it for my own benefit. No, that's not what it means. When God says rule over, it means be, uh, be a good steward. What does that mean? Uh, this world is given to you, but you didn't create it. It's not yours, it's mine. What I entrust into your care, so I'm giving it to you temporarily, as long as you're living on this earth, so that you would take good care of it. How many of you had a garden before? Yeah? Yeah? You have a garden? Garden? Yeah? Any any of you have pets? No dogs, no cats, no fish. <laughs> um, when you have something like a garden, how many of you have, grow, have grown anything? <clears throat> a flower pot. Have you grown like cactuses, Eblis? <laughs> no? Oh. All right. If you have done any kind of uh, cultivating, you know, when you have a uh, flower pot, when you have a uh, garden, it takes a lot of care. You have to think about it quite often. Uh, you have to remind yourself. Oh, you know what? They need fresh air. Oh, here. They need, they need the sunlight a little bit. Not too much. Okay, so provide some shade if you can get some light. Oh, they need water. Not too much. Not too little. There's some care that goes into it, right? And so, God gave us the, the earth to take good care of it and utilize it. Right? He gave all the vegetables and fruits for eating. The fish. Uh, later, I mean, not in the creation account, but later on, he even allowed us to eat meat. So, um, so he gave us everything to make good use of it, but also at the same at the same time, uh, don't abuse it. Uh, take good care of it. So that's what he means by rule over. So he gave, he created human beings, and immediately, what happens? Uh, the first thing is marriage, Adam and Eve, together, to reflect his own good relationship. And then the second thing that happens is that he gives them meaningful tasks. 
prime responsibility of human beings, you and me. It does not matter what kind of jobs that we have or what kind of visions that we have. We are interested with the responsibility to take good care of the earth, the people around us. The people around us. It could be family, friends, anybody that we encounter in a marketplace, in the, in the, on the street. What did the Bible talk about it? Oh gosh. I haven't seen any other books that talk about this. And the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Mm -hmm. Now no shrug. Shrug has yet appeared on the earth. And no thing has yet sprung up. For the Lord God has not sent rain on the earth and there is no one to work. Aha. Uh -huh. The streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground, and the Lord formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life, and the man became a living being. So do you know that when we die, we all go back to the dust? We all know that, right? Because we came from the dust. Yeah. Um, I forgot your name. Uh, Like, chameleons living in the, in the grass. Like, it was so not developed. 
that um, the creatures that you would see in the cities, Los Angeles, no, they, they don't have <laughs> these creatures, but you would see those. And just 10 minutes walk from the campus was the ocean. Wow. So clear that you can see the fish moving, you know, just moving around. They're right beside your legs. Like if you, if you dip yourself in the water, they will just go past your legs because they're, they're, they have never been, uh, like no one really bothered them. You know what I mean? Like no one ever caught them. No one ever did anything. So they, they go safe, safe around you. Even a turtle comes, comes around you. Um, if we do that, if we see any creatures like uh, in the ocean, like around here, I don't know, Santa Monica Beach or Rita on the Beach, like they'll run away, right? <laughs> and if, if you approach them, they'll run away. But the, these creatures, they, they don't run away because they've been so safe for so long. And so, wow. And then you just sit in the backyard uh, looking at the clear sky. And there's sometimes like a sun that comes out, but at the same time, it's kind of drizzly. It's very interesting in Hawaii. So the sun is up, but it's raining. And so you see like double rainbows. Like it's so huge right in front of your eyes. Um, it's not like a paradise. <laughs> um, Garden of Eden was better than that. So God put them in this room, baby room called Garden of Eden. He gave everything for them to eat and to enjoy. Eat from all the trees. I don't know if you like fruit. I'm a big fruit eater. I love like tropical fruits. You know, any fruit is satisfying. The Garden of Eden was like the best, like the best place for fruit and all the things that you could eat from. It's like having a, a nice extravagant buffet every day for every single meal. All right. Um, there was one thing that God called, told us not to eat from. Here's a tree of knowledge of good and evil. Adam and Eve, you are too free to eat from any of the trees. Make good use of anything that I gave you in the garden of Eden. However, don't touch this tree. Because this tree, if you eat from it, you're going to die. Right? So uh, when we were growing up, yeah, uh, we're taught of dangers. Right? When we were babies, um, our moms teach us not to touch the stove. It's hot. Don't touch the boiling pot. <laughs> no. Because you get burned. You're going to have blisters and it's going to take two weeks for you to heal. Don't, don't, don't touch it. Right? Um, don't run out from the street. Like when, when there's our, there are cars coming and going, don't run out there because you're going to get killed. Right? So those things we learned early on. To this tree, God said, don't touch it, you're going to die. Um, why did God create that tree then, right? <laughs> he should have just removed everything so that it would be completely safe for everyone. Um, although in my limited understanding, uh, my, my understanding of God is imperfect because God is so vast and is so unfathomably great. I'm discovering and rediscovering God every day. So in my limitations, I will tell you it is. Um, if you read the Bible carefully from back to from uh, front to back, then you will understand this. You will have the same understanding. So this is the daytime. Let's see light. Yeah? So how are you able to tell that it's daytime? It's not night. How are you able to tell? Sun comes up, yes. The sun is out there, it's daytime. Uh, so is there ever a time when the sun sets? The sun sets every day. Uh, it gets dark. Yeah? Because of the darkness, we know that it's nighttime. So because there's nighttime, because there's darkness, we're able to tell that this is light. If everything is light, Okay, so if you go to a certain part of the uh, Earth, if you go to like the, um, is that North Pole? I think it's North Pole. If you go to that uh, area, uh, you see like there's a period of time. You have no night. It's all uh, light through like so many days. Yeah, is that true? So then you're, you're not able to tell unless you have a watch or a clock. 
Uh, you can't tell if it's daytime or nighttime. Yeah? But we know it's daytime because there's darkness at nighttime. Because of darkness, we're able to tell that this is light. Because of the nighttime, we're able to tell that this is daytime. And so if you don't have this thing called no, don't touch it, then you don't know what kind of blessings and privileges that you have. It does not feel like privilege at all. Right? So there's a reason when, um, so if you, you, you like, like our ch uh, childhood experiences because it's sort of an imperfect illustration, but nevertheless, uh, for the sake of, uh, yeah, just, just explaining, I will utilize imperfect uh, examples. When we are little, uh, our moms and dads give us something like, I don't know, oh, good job. Oh, yay, you cleaned up after yourself. I'll give you like this cookie. Or, oh, good job. You studied for two hours. Now you can watch TV or something like that. Did that ever happen to you? Yeah? So our parents give us rewards for something that we have done well or good. Yeah? And so by the rewards, we are able to tell that um, because they are not giving us rewards all the time, if, if our mom and dad says, you can watch the TV all you want, and you can eat any cookies like all you want, all the time, then it does not feel like a privilege, right? And so, uh, because there are times when we don't have that, we are aware, aware that this is something uh, of a privilege. Right? It's something good, or it's a reward. Um, if you don't have that one single tree, you don't get to learn that all you're given is a gift and privilege. If you don't have this one thing that you're not supposed to touch, you don't you never learn about obedience. All right. So uh, God gave us self-will. Do you know that? We are the beings with self-will. And so we make decisions according to our will. Will has tremendous power. When I say that, um, I can give you an example. I uh, sometimes go into a meeting uh, for children with disabilities, learning disabilities. It could be uh, psychological disability, it could be physical, it could be uh, language difficulties, right? it could be anything. Uh, they have difficulty uh, at school, they have to receive some special services in order to you know, keep up with other kids w without disabilities. Okay? So I go to those meetings and um, when I see these kids, um, so uh, when I see these kids, um, I think about gave us that one tree to not touch is because he wanted us to know, well, when I say us, uh, because we came from Adam and Eve. Uh, when, he, when he said to Adam and Eve, don't touch it, it was to teach them obedience. It was to teach them that everything that they had was a gift and privilege. They should appreciate it. Right? And so he put that tree there. This is the only tree out of the millions of trees out here that you are not supposed to touch. Okay? So, uh, when we are growing up, we also oh self will. Okay, so back to back to our illustration. We're given the self will, and the will is powerful because um, when I see these kids with learning disabilities, um, oh, some of, some of them have severe difficulties. Okay? Um, some of them actually are not verbal. Other kids, they're just way behind. But you know what? What makes difference over say five year period. So this kid with, and that kid, they both have say autism. Okay? Autism is, is that you are not able to understand the social cues. You, you don't know, you don't know how to empathize with other people's feelings. And that actually sometimes gets in the way of you learning things too. Anyway, so these two kids of similar conditions, they have autism and they have difficulties. After say three to five years, they, turn, they can turn out to be very different. Of the same condition, but they can turn out to be very different. What <coughs> makes a difference? This child 
who overcomes this learning disabilities and uh, catch up very quickly. Uh, very, uh, it just, the development and it just um, acquiring all the skills that are necessary is just explosive in this kid versus that kid and it's just like, people are all frustrated that he's not learning, she's not learning. Okay, so what's, what's the difference? The difference is self-will. So if you have the will, uh, and decide, like, I want to do, I want to do well, I want to change, I want to be different, uh, then this child is going to have, okay, you okay? This child, the learning curve is like very steep, and, and, and we never expect this child, because of the condition, we did not expect this child to even go to college. But you know what? Years after, this child overcomes all the difficulties. He masters all the skill because he has a desire and a will. You know, he exercises his will. Right? He finally reaches the uh, point past our expectations, past anyone's expectations and he goes to college. When I see that happen, it brings great joy in my heart. Okay? Self-will. Will is powerful. And God gave you and me self-will to exercise for good purposes. Some, some, some people, and we sometimes utilize our self-will in order to do bad things, unfortunately. But that was not God's original intention. We're given that self-will to choose the good. So, uh, back to our creation account. God put that tree of good and uh, knowledge of good and evil. Don't, don't eat from that tree. You can enjoy all other trees because when you touch it, when you, well, when you eat from that tree, I'm sorry, he did not say don't touch it. If you eat from that tree, don't pick the fruit and eat because you're going to die. What does that mean? It does not mean physical death. Okay? It's not like uh, our fairy tale, you know, the Snow White. It's the, the poisoned apple and she, you know, collapses. No, that's not that story. This is talking about the tree of knowledge of good, uh, good and evil. Don't eat that fruit because if you eat that fruit, it means you're rebelling against me. This is what I commanded you to do as God, the sovereign God of the universe, as your creator. Don't, don't eat it. But if you eat it, you're going against me. Then our relationship is broken. And therefore, you spiritually die. And my relationship with you is broken. So don't eat it. That's what it means. Okay. Uh, but unfortunately, what does Adam and Eve do? What do they do? They actually, uh, so there's a little bit of background, but I'm not going to talk about the background for the sake of time. <laughs> there was another being called Satan. He's a fallen angel. So when God created the universe, he created all the things on the earth, but he also had creatures out, outside, like uh, the creatures in the spiritual realm. And there were angels. Okay? They were all good at the beginning, but they also had a self will. So um, there were at least three kinds of uh, angelic, like powerful angelic beings uh, archangels, like angel above all the lesser angels, okay? These are like captains. These are like majors, okay? So, like a general, I guess. Uh, three archangels. One of them was called Lucifer. And he was a praise... Uh, well, I don't know if he played the guitar or harp. I don't know what he did. But he praised God. Because praising God is the most... Uh, the highest privilege that you can ever get. And he was given that privilege. To worship God, but uh, because he was so beautiful, okay, Lucifer was very beautiful. Um, he was like the best, like well, aside from human beings, like he, he was beautiful. He was very skillful. He had a lot of power. Um, and one day, he thought to himself, "I'm gonna become God." So he decided to rebel against God. And so when you rebel against God, the relationship is broken. And therefore, he was casted out of heaven. He was thrown out from heaven. Uh, by the way, he, he was leading 
other angels, like lesser angels, one third of them. So there are three archangels, remember? So one of them, uh, you know, each one of them had like angels under. And uh, Lucifer, the worship angel, was casted out along with his lesser angels, one third of them. So they were all casted out. Where did they go? They came to the earth. <laughs> so Lucifer was in the shape of a uh, snake. Um, he was in, he came into the garden, and so uh, he waited for an opportune time. When Adam and Eve were walking in the garden, they were enjoying, relaxing. Um, Adam is the one who was told uh, this command, don't eat from that tree because you're going to die. Don't do that. And now tell Eve about it. And so Adam told Eve, okay, so they both knew that they were not supposed to uh, eat from that tree. However, um, uh, Lucifer came along and he got Eve's attention. Eve, why? Let's have a talk. Right? Uh, did, did God really say that you should not eat from any of the trees? Which is not true. He allowed, God allowed all the trees, but just one. But he started to um, uh, like instill in um, Eve's mind, God is withholding good things from you. Okay, now rebel was his temptation, but uh, that was totally a lie. So Satan, uh, Lucifer's other name is Satan, the one who opposes. Lucifer is a liar from the beginning. Um, so he lied to Eve that God was withholding something good from them, and that he she should take. The, the reason he's withholding is because he's afraid that you're going to become like him. So he doesn't want you to become like him, and therefore you should eat from that tree. You're not gonna die. So unfortunately, Eve exercised her self-will. Her desire, unfortunately, was to become become God. And so she ate from that tree. And then, well, was she alone? No. Adam was right there with her, and Adam did not stop her. Unfortunately, when she gave it to Adam, he also ate because he had the same desire to rebel against God, to become God himself. And so they both ate. Right at that moment, the relationship with God was broken. The perfect love relationship was broken. And they were casted out of the Eden. And God put a flame of fire around the garden so that they would not be able to find it out. So the tragic things happened. When their love relationship with God was broken, it was not just the relationship that was broken. When um, when our relationship with God is broken, other stuff happens. So because human beings were given the responsibility to take care of all the creation and to maintain the goodness of creation, when they rebel against God and the relationship breaks, then the things of Lucifer comes, comes in. So there was no sadness, there was no bad things on the earth until they rebelled against God. As a result of their rebelling God, by the way, they rebelled against God, but they decided to follow Lucifer, right? So then Lucifer became their God, and therefore all these bad things started to happen on the earth. Sickness, hatred, violence, um, death, um, brokenness, Jealousy, blaming, shame, all these things came into the earth, unfortunately, because Adam and Eve opened that door for us. Okay? And so Eve, um, Adam and Eve, um, afterwards, they were still physically alive. They, they were spiritually dead. They could not hear God as clearly anymore. Okay? Um, we are all created to hear God's voice. That's normal. Because of the fall, we lost that ability, and we have to regain that ability. And I, I want to, I want to tell you a little more about that later. So therefore, all the sin came into the earth. We see sin all over the world, right? When we watch the news, there are some tragedy, right? Violence and crime. The origin goes back to the Garden of Eden. That's why our, some people ask, like some of my friends actually, actually ask me this question. If God is all good and He's holy and He's loving, how is it that this earth has so much 
evil. I don't understand. Why is, it, why is there so much injustice? Well, the reason is because Adam and Eve allowed that. It was not God, but it was Adam and Eve. And so, um, we talked about John 1 last time. John 1 talks about the fact that um, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that Word became flesh and lived among us. Remember that? The Word is more than just spoken words or written language. We're talking about the wisdom, the mastermind. He was with God. His name is Jesus. He came to this earth to live with us because he's a re relational God. So Jesus is God himself, and he's the Son of God. I know it's a kind of difficult concept, but... <laughs> so he came, uh, just like us trying to become like a, like a little ant. <laughs> God became one of us. He was born as a little baby. And he grew in stature and knowledge. He had to learn some skills. He had sadness. He had happiness. Like he, he had human emotions. Uh, he had all the human aspects. But he was God. So there was a reason he came to this earth to live with us. Uh, yes, one of the reasons was to become one of us so that he understands what it is like to be a human being. Number two, to communicate better with us because we, we fell. We lost that hearing ability. And therefore he became the flesh and lived amongst on us. He taught the truth. And it's all recorded in the Bible. Okay? What, he, what he said at, verbally was recorded like the, by, by the people like John. The eyewitnesses and that book remains with us so that that will become a primary source of communication with God as we read it and meditate on it we can meet God we can see the will of God and we can be restored to that relationship that had been broken now if you heard of the name Jesus okay, for, well Christmas right around the corner right Christmas Christ Okay, that's that means Christos. That means Savior. Okay, in in we say Jesus. That's English. Where did that name come from? Jesus came from Yeshua. Yeshua is a Hebrew name. Okay.